Consent agenda and minutes. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve tonight's consent agenda items A through B as presented and waive the reading. Second. We have a motion. We have support. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, motion carried. Thank you very much. Bills of warrants. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve bills of warrant number 14189 paid in the amount of $20,407.51 along with bills of warrant number 14190 unpaid in the amount of $66,663.38. Finally, the visa bill in the amount of $2,333.08 as presented in way of the reading. Support. I do have some questions. Okay. We have a motion and support, and we have a question. Yes. No? Okay. Um, that is that a deposit for the door here, the $2,150? $2, yes. Half? Yes, okay. half of it now. And then on the visa bill, it says um, for $541.94, it says parks, and all of the receipts says a dream machine special edition. Just wondering what oh, it is. Oh, that, is, <laughs> that is the network switch for the camera system wow. at the lighthouse to tie it into the uh, internet okay. and record it. All right. And any other detail do we will have to fill out. Oh, that's okay. I just yeah. couldn't figure out what it was. That's got a funny is. name. Yeah. <laughs> any other questions? That's all I have. Now we'll go to a roll call vote. Eric. Yes. Heating. Yes. Wakeman. Yes. Ransom. Yes. Toolstick. Yes. Family. Yes. Mayor Gardner. Yes. Thank you very much. Good job with that Toolski name. The no presentations tonight. I'll move on to the mayor's report. The newest bridge opening date projection is the middle of August. Like August. <laughs> 14. That 14. report was, that's what, uh, that's a report. Now I can only report can what I I'm stop being you told. For one second? Sure. So they were doing the tar from, for the whole bridge report, uh, approach. Why are they tarring it when it was concrete before? Uh, it was asphalt, or asphalt coming down from the. Was it asphalt? That yeah, it was, it was before. I have photos of it because it. Oh. Uh, I could have sworn it was like some, most concrete and then asphalt when it hit the bottom. No, it was mo it was it was asphalt don't. paving. Okay. Almost all the way down, just the deck. Just the deck was concrete yes. before? And that's what those white foam blocks were for the transition. You know, as they stack those up to keep it from sinking down because it's usually a problem where the asphalt meets the concrete because the concrete doesn't move it at, at the right material under the asphalt is settled, but those things are supposed to prevent that. And it's going to hold up to these dynamic trucks and everything. That's what it's designed to do. All I right. never built a bridge, but that's what okay. they are Personally. designed to do. That's fine, but it was asphalt before. Oh, I, I could have sworn it was like yeah. most. I have, I have some photos of it. All right. Can we turn uh, the volume up here? You can it here. Yeah, okay. Uh, this is very touchy. Is that better? Okay, good go. Thank you. So, 
August 14th is what we're being told. Rob Welch reported that on site. I was talking to him while he was up there just today, and he said that's what it's going to be. I heard there's a lot of engineering changes. It's important to note we have two millage proposals for Lunapier voters to consider in the upcoming August 6th election. Uh, this is informational only. I'm not telling anybody how to vote, but our current one mill flood millage will expire December 31st, 2024. The proposed millage that's on the ballot would replace that same millage at the same one mill rate at today's millage rate. A mill is $1 for every $1,000 of taxable value. This would replace the one mill with the same one mill rate. It expires every four years. It's the same one that was approved in 2020. The funds are restricted to operating and maintaining our dike and stormwater drainage systems, and they cannot be used for any other purpose. It shows on a balance ballot as a new millage because it technically is it replaces the one that expires at the end of the year they are not overlapping one ends and if the other one passes it would pick up also our current 1.9 police millage that passed in 2020 expires december 31st 2024 on the ballot is a two mil replacement millage for that on the august 6th ballot it would replace the current 1.9 with a 2.0. Uh, the 1.9 expires in 2024 also. It goes away, and if the new one passes, it would replace it. These funds are restricted to paying for part-time police officers, uh, and all of our police officers are part-time, including our chief. Both proposals would expire in four years. We have one quote to repair the water system at City Hall, waiting on a second report from another local contractor. Walking through, it took about an hour just to find out what was what in there, and just, we couldn't even find it all. But as you can imagine, that build, building was built before Luna Pier was a city, and then added on to and added on to, and you, it's like a history lesson in plumbing when you start looking at what's hooked up, there's several, there's galvanized, there's copper, PVC. We're hoping we didn't find any lead, that's a good thing. Um, but what we're, the quote we have right now is, is replacing what's totally obsolete, bringing it up, and we're not touching the drain system. We never did find the events for the drains. Uh, they're there somewhere because they operate, but this would just be on the supply side. And I want somebody else to look at it because that's a, quite a complicated uh, job. So more to come on that. We'll look at some of the options we have and, and pick the best value. One of the things we're looking at is the water heater is from the early 80s maybe. It's, we need a new one and should we go with a on-demand tankless system or we could replace it with what we have there. The on-demand of course is more expensive but there's a savings in the long run, especially since we don't use water there very often, just for washing, pretty much. So stay tuned, we'll get those estimates and find out what the best value is and go from there. Now, a big thank you to Ron Wright for his work painting the Luna Pier Library building. It was much needed. The old paint just wore right off. He put the two coats on, it looks fantastic. Uh, thank you, Dewey Bond, for all of your hard work and donation of materials and expertise to install our camera system in the lighthouse. It's still we're still doing some work on it and and uh, improving it as we go, but it's already better than anything we had before. Uh, and we really could not begin to afford this system without Dewey's expertise and. The way, you know, to get what we got for that system, it would just be unaffordable for us. But Dewey's done a great job making that happen. That's all I have. Any questions? The camera system—is it like a security system? Is that what the cameras 
are for? Great, great question. I'm glad you asked. Yeah, I'm pretty uh, geeked out about it. Yes, it, it shows, right now it shows, we can see the beachfront, we can see both pay machines, we can see the parking lot there, or not the beachfront, but the front, I'll say the lakeside is front to the, lot, to the lighthouse. We can see people coming and going, we can watch people pay, watch see who pay was passed. Any movement through the night, uh, it'll put a bookmark up, oh, okay. and so if somebody walks by even, it, it keeps it can, records continuously, but it'll it'll flag a bookmark. You click on that, and it'll catch anything from a cat walking by to a person to a car driving through. So it's really fantastic for monitoring activities, and without being invasive or it's more surveillance than it is security, though. Yes, surveillance. We're correct. <clears throat> Any other questions? Now we'll move on to department reports, and I'll turn the floor over to Chief Bandre. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My report's pretty short. Um, manpower, we're, we're at sworn, eight sworn officers still. Um, I have four applications out. I have some interest from some other officers that um, are looking for some part-time work, but they haven't asked for an application yet. Uh, the four I have out, I'm waiting for them to turn them back in. I thought they were more motivated than they, they said they were more motivated than they're actually turning out to be, because I expected them two weeks ago. So we'll see how that goes. Um, dynamic, uh, over the last month or so, the noise and dust complaints have been down. I, th I, I really think they took a break, because it seems like they haven't made a lot of noise every day, but when they make noise, everybody hears it. So it's, we'll get calls about a big boom from a couple of people, and then other times, several days in a row, we won't get anything. Uh, so I'm hoping that's what's going on. And my officers can hear it too when they are working, they haven't reported anything. Uh, the blight, several properties have been mowed and cleaned up. Uh, we've gotten several boats registered and, and or the stickers actually put on the boat. Um, same thing with vehicles. Uh, we've got a couple of vehicles moved, a couple of vehicles registered, and a couple of people they're just, they have the stickers in their house, they just don't put them on because they haven't used the boat in eight years anyways. But they do keep supplying the boat every every three years. Um, you can, I do have the, my blight report if you have any questions on it. Um, and that should be given to you by email. Um, um, the beach has been busy, we've had great weather. Um, and then we've had bad weather, like always in Michigan. But it's been busy, but not overcrowded. And it's just amazing that it's not more crowded because it's such a great beach. You look at it and you're like, wow, everybody's having a good time. There's lots of room. There's been several days where they put up volleyball nets. Some groups put up volleyball nets and they have volleyball games going on all day. And there's still plenty of room for more people. So it's like, man, I wish more people would come. And I don't know if you see me on Facebook, but every time people see like, where can I go within an hour of Detroit for, I always put Luna Beer Beach, no dogs, <laughs> and pay for parking. <laughs> That's what I, and, and, and some people have like, like, thank you, my, she's my ex-sister-in-law. She's come here a couple of times because I've told her about it. And she's like, I, she lives in, off of Dixie. She's like, I never knew about this. And she was really impressed. Uh, traffic, uh, we continue to monitor. Um, and issue citations on Herald for speeding and truck traffic. Um, I want to thank Dave Gouts and DPW for putting up the no truck traffic sign back up. It was taken down for a while because of all the construction. He put it back up. And it just makes it easier for us to prosecute tickets that we issue to the truck traffic. Because if they say it's not posted, you know, it's still not a truck route, and they should know that, but it's a, somewhat of an argument if they say it's not posted. But now it is posted. The last thing is not on your, it's not, I forgot this when I was doing my uh, uh, report. Uh, Safety City. The fire department did Safety City, and I was invited to go, and I was set up. <laughs> because <laughs> Derek, uh, uh, Chief, Deputy Chief Welton, he's like, hey, a couple months ago, he's like, hey, do you want to be part of Safety City? I was like, absolutely. So I'm used to, like, most of the time when you were involved in stuff like this, it's like you come in and you, they have, like, Eddie the Eagle safety book that you sit down and you read for the kids. Or you give us 15 minute presentation, 
or you read, you know, something when you're off the time done. So I was like, okay. So I, I was planning on my, head, you know, in my head what I'm going to do to buy some material. So Friday I called him. Tuesday was my day, and I said, Derek, how much time do I have? He goes, two hours. Said, what? <laughs> he goes, yeah, you got the whole day. I said, oh my goodness. It's okay. So I mean, actually, I had more material than I could have talked for every night. Babble, if you haven't noticed that. But I covered it, and we had uh, bingo, we gave out prizes. It was a great time, the kids were well behaved. Um, my day was actually, they had 25, 24 the first day, I think they had 19 the second day. So it was a little bit down, so I, was, I, I had a smaller crowd, but they were just well behaved. I brought the police cars over, I brought the jet skis over so they could go in and out of them, play on the PAs, climb on the jet skis, take pictures. I had a vest, they could put on a hat, and all the kids were just wonderful. Um, parents stayed, which I was sort of surprised about that, but all the parents stayed with the kids, which I guess is the modern thing to do um, before it was drop them off and see in two hours. But they all stayed, and, and it, it was good because I could talk to them too. Because some of the issues uh, we went over was gun safety, and most of that isn't the kids. It's the parents' responsibility. But if the kids see it, then they have to know what to do too. So we talked about that. I, I you know, told the parents what I did with my kids when I was growing up, when they were growing up. Because I was a police officer, the, my son was two when I became a police officer, and my daughter was born when I was in the, when I was going to the academy. So I'd been, they had guns around my house the whole time. So I explained to them what I did, try to take the curiosity away, and um, you know, hopefully they, they learn from the same thing with the kids. Uh, hopefully they learn from the stranger danger. Again, strangers, and I, I tried to be very cautious in what I said. But most danger doesn't come from strangers. Most danger comes from aunts, uncles, friends of the family. And so I expect to them mostly, if something's going on that you're not comfortable with it, tell your parents, tell your parents. And that's why I kept trying to beat into their heads, talk to your parents about anything, anything that's going on. Bullying at school, talk to your parents. You know, teachers you can talk to, but yeah, but talk to your parents, they'll handle it. And I think I beat that to their head. Uh, we had fun, we played, uh, Bingo, uh, police bingo. So I had, you know, talked about different stuff. We did handcuffs and and hats and different stuff we wear. And so then I would describe it, and the kids would yell at the answer. And one girl knew every answer. I forget her name, but I gave her a prize because they knew who she was. <laughs> Duval knew who she was. She's, he's like, oh yeah, that's. I think it might have been his daughter, but she knew every answer. She paid attention. I was like, I just appreciate that you paid attention to me <laughs> because you knew the answers when I described them. So. She got a prize, and then we did, um, I did art, which um, I don't know if you saw on Facebook, but I was, I was very happy with the, the pictures. It was supposed to be police related that they um, drew, um, could be today, or just any aspect of police they saw. If they saw a horse at, you know, uh, Freedom Festival, draw a horse, or redesign a police car. So I got a couple of real good ones, if you, if you want to pass them down. They were like the show they were, I put them on Facebook and did on the police page and did it. And Olivia won, so I gave her a certificate for um, Artist Laureate of Luna Pier Days, <laughs> Luna Pier uh, Safety City Days. So I made her up a certificate. She also got some candy bars. And um, then the, I, every, one, every one of those got a surprise. I got a prize. Looks just like you. Yeah, and that's what, I, that's what she won. <laughs> <laughs> um, not really, but you know, it, I think it was supposed to be, but it was just it was just a fun time. And I would recommend if, if you have grandkids, send them. Um, neighborhood kids, tell them about it. Um, have um, have them attend because even what I saw from the day before, I wasn't there Monday, but they started it off by asking questions about the day prior. What did what did we go home and talk about? And that's sort of with your parents. That's where I keyed on about talking to your parents yeah. is, you know, safety plan. Where do you meet? You know, where's your meeting place? How do you get out of the house? How do you do this? And so I sort of played off that. And the kids listened and they, you know, they knew what they were supposed to do. So I was like, okay, this is a good crowd. Um, you know, they are interactive. They are going home talking to this, you know, through this stuff with them. So it was just great. I, I hope next year they get more. Um, and I don't know, 
I, I don't know. I'm sure the housing was advised of it, but very few kids from housing came, and I guess that just might be participation from housing. But I would like to see more of the kids there because there's a lot of kids there, and I know they are there now, but I would like to see more kids come because it was, it was a good time, and I know the kids had a good time, and I think they learned a lot from the firemen. Has it been a while since we had one? Uh, it's been a couple of years. Yeah, because I know good. when my kids were little, we had it every year. But yeah, and that's what all the parents said that yeah. were there. They're like, they all went. Yes, <laughs> that's what they said. And the one lady came, she's like, I didn't come last yesterday because I didn't know about it, but the neighbor kids came and told my daughter. She goes, I came to Safety City. I want my daughter to come to Safety City. And they're like, yeah, come on in. We're not going to kick anybody my, out. My granddaughter was one of them that helped. Okay. And she was all excited. She came home and told us all kinds of stuff. She goes, it's different than when I went. Well, yeah, you're 14. Yeah, it's yeah a lot I, and I think the liabilities are in little, 10 years. Yeah, liabilities <laughs> issues are yeah. a lot more prevalent now. Where you know, I saw I saw pictures where they took the kids in kayaks out in the water and they were swimming <laughs> lessons and they were diving and they were and I'm like, wow, that was that was all out there. But nowadays with liability, you know, you have a waiver this that just signed yep. before you got done with everything. And that's my reporting. Any questions? Thank you. I would just like to say uh, my condolences to your fellow officer. Thank you. Um, I know your son works with my brother-in-law, and my brother-in-law knew the guy, so I'm sure there's a tight connection yeah, there. My, so. my, my son went to the service today. He also knew him Did he? because yeah. they worked the same midnight shift, and they would, you know, cities are so close, they'd meet up, talk once in a while. And yep. So yeah, so. And stuff. It always makes you reevaluate everything when this happens. I mean, I've been through right. several in in my career. So you sort of, I mean, it's like anything, you, you sort of take stuff for granted and you sort of get lax and then something like this happens and you go, oh, okay, yeah, what about this? Is, I'm, I'm stupid, I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And not to say he was doing anything wrong, but it's like we just have to reevaluate our own safety and, and security. So I appreciate that. Thank you. And then also, you're doing a great job on the blight. I'd like Thank to you. say that too, uh, very well. It's, I think everyone's noticing there. that. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Getting, it's getting there. Yep. It's getting there, but uh, still some. I, but but I it is noticed and okay, appreciated. Thank yes, thank you. It is. very much so. Um, question: The speed limit sign right here. Which one? The mobile the, one or the the mobile one? Okay. Are we going to flip that soon? Yeah, I, I, I actually was supposed to move it last week so Dave could mow under it. I was going to say, the grass is like two feet high under so that So Dave could mow under it, so I'll, I'll get that <laughs> You're going to have to issue yourself a point. <laughs> exactly. I'll get that moved to, uh, probably tomorrow. <laughs> All right. Just, just wondering. Because, well, and another thing, so um, a group of us, for a few days in a row, we were sitting up at the Chateau outside. A lot of people blow that stop sign. Which one? It's Chateau. Oh, like word. <laughs> um, Turning going or? east. Coming into town. Coming into town. Yes, town. really? Okay. Yeah, nice. they all blow that stop sign. Uh, a lot of them. At least um, two out of five. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, do, we, I mean, we sat there for like two hours just watching them. And um, then they, the ones that blow it end up speeding down Harold. So even if you have somebody... So they're somebody, the ones that are turning? Yeah. Most of them are turning? Okay. Yeah. So even if you have somebody sitting there and then calling radio in the head or something like that, just, you know... Yep, on weekend, yeah. it was like Thursday, Friday, Saturday that we were sitting up there. Okay, just happened that we were up there. <laughs> Two hours. <laughs> Two hours. <laughs> we were there longer. Desserts. We were there longer, and it just happened that we ended up there. You sure you were seeing double? <laughs> <laughs> you saw us up there. <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, one thing to shout out to Brandon Bacon, who was really responsible for pushing and saying, "Yes, we got to do it. We got to do it." got to do it anymore Derek down and he decided to do the safety city oh. and Josh Duval jumped in and ran with it he he made it happen even on two hours he got away. volunteered he could sort of like I did he, yes he, he goes Derek always asks you to do stuff and then doesn't tell you the whole scope of it and yeah. then you get involved and you're like oh yeah you're doing this yeah but he, he goes, nailed so, it that's what happened because I because I told him what happened to me and he's like oh yes same thing happened to me he's like how much you involved because next thing I know I was in charge but he did do a great job. Yeah. He did a great job. I was impressed with everything they they did. The kids, you, you know, the comments. And the, I was. I mean, truly, I was really impressed because I was, you know, getting ready to talk. And they're, okay, did you go home and talk to your parents last night? And the kids are like, yeah. Where's your meeting place? This, this. And like some of the parents were there, and they're like, yeah, that's what we did. We sat down and discussed it and how to do it. And, you know, the stop, drop, and roll that we were taught is still there and powerful, but 
<laughs> they go over more stuff now. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No. Fire report or building report. DDA is active, still working on some projects in downtown. They've really taken ownership of the downtown area as they should be in the downtown development authority and just doing a great job there working always looking on improvements for parking and things like that so thank you to them for for their hard work uh, nothing from flood other than they're working on the dike assessment inspection uh, parks and rec diana would you have anything to um, nothing new. We're going to award the next yard of the month, Tuesday the 30th. Um, our meeting is the 13th at the library at 7. Everyone is welcome. We'll be um, really working on Summer Smash, which is going to be on the 17th of August. Um, there's a proposal tonight about the trees for 7th Street to do in the fall. As you noted, the library's been painted, looks beautiful. We're working on getting the equipment, playground equipment at Water Tower and 7th Street painted and possibly getting some mulch on the ground. Um, Dave, we talked to Dave about the bushes by the town clock at Memorial Park in Lakewood, and he's looking at them, either removing all of them or at yep. least three quarters of them. Yeah, he did a mistake. Oh, okay. All right, and then Night Market is still scheduled for September 7th from 6 to 10. What time do you do the... Uh yard at month. What time do you go over there? We meet at the library at 7 okay. and then we ride around and look at and anyone can nominate. You can nominate on the Luna Pier uh, Facebook page or at the library. There are forms. So we look at the nominations and then decide. Does a yard have to actually be visible from the street? Like if they have like a side yard? You know it doesn't because a couple of our nominations we're going to have to go on the lakeside. So and, and we do look at the condos too, and especially, pardon? Then you're trespassing, <laughs> Well, it depends if you're in the south end or the north end. Yeah. <laughs> it's for a good cause. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Uh, planning, anything to add there? I know planning is heating up, there's always things going on. <laughs> um, we had a presentation from there was there's a name he, they go by Harbor. I have to look on the map up there. It's like Luna Pier Harbor. I don't know, but anyways, it it was about um, from the cafe going to the pier area, but we decided to table it until under um, we get more directions from Mike from the building yes. department. Okay. Yep. So that was, he gave us some suggestions and he wanted us not to go forward yes. until he was able to check on some things first. Yep. He submitted a site plan, but there are some details that need to be yes. worked through. And Mayor, thank you plan. for the information. Okay. Yep. It was You're appreciated. Welcome. Any update on the uh, blight form? Nothing. We right now didn't even look at Light or we haven't looked at any ordinance right now because um, Sean, who is the one that has spearheaded the blight, and he is out of town, so it's kind of his thing. And when he comes back with it, then we'll go for it. Thank you, Seth. Everything. Thank you very much. And we have no old business. Uh, moving on to new business: Seventh Street Park tree planting. We need council approval as part of this grant application process so that it's, we know that the grant grantor knows that it's okay to plant the trees where we're proposing that council's on board with it. Stormwater pumps repair. Now that's a little bit confusing there. There's actually three different, there's two options for the one pump. The one pump they disassembled and they, they can rebuild that pump with all new parts and that price is $40,599. Uh, 
there's also an option to buy a brand new pump at $60,000 for that instead of repairing the old pump. Now, it's getting all new parts inside and using the housing. I think we're getting as good of a pump with our 40,000, with our 20,000. And saving 20,000. And saving $20,000. And flood and erosion agrees with that. Okay. That there's there's nothing wrong with the housing or anything what, on that pump. What type of warranty? It's, yeah. It's not in there. Yeah, it's not in there. It, um, I can check on that and see what the warranty is uh, versus a new pump. Uh, but I don't have that information tonight. Some of the pumps are 30 years old. This is rare that we did have a problem with one. And Kennedy has, it's the same brand pump for all of those. They are, the, they are really the only distributor of those systems. Uh, there's an old flood erosion expert in the, in the audience if he knows any Now, working in the industry that I'm in, we deal with this every day, and we deal with pumps that are 12 foot in diameter. <laughs> These are much smaller than that, and they always typically go for rehab because the housing just, unless it was there was a lot of grit that was going through the pump that scoured it from the inside and that, and these aren't going to be anywhere near what we experience in my industry. They almost always go with a rehab over a buying a new. Yeah. Thank you. Except when it's 40 years old, like the one in Memorial that he pulled out, it's one of the few that we never replaced since the system was installed. So that would be the exception to that rule. That it's just obsolete. You can't get parts for it. Right. So that's the one that has to be a whole new pump. That's the, <sighs> the new one for. Right. For Memorial, Memorial Park. Park. Okay. Yeah, that one was not was no longer serviceable. Right. But I'm very confident with the rebuild on that one. Looking at all they did. So that covers the uh, stormwater pump repair. 20, 23, 2044 budget amendments. Uh, do you want to elaborate on that, Charlie? Exactly what you can, you can explain it better than I can. Tony and I just went through the budget to see what, what line items and what was uh, allocated towards them and what we put over them. And it was for the ones that we something different here, Mike. We have not shared. Connie and I went over the budget uh, 20, 23, 24. Okay. We went. <laughs> We went over the budget. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so we went over the budget. We were trying to determine what line items did we actually overspend on, and so these budget amendments are to allow us to have enough funds in that in those line items, so they're not overspent. So when we get audited, it's not pointed out. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, on that note, the we project what we think our revenue sharing is going to be, even though the state has not finalized their budget, and their budget determines how much we're actually getting in revenue sharing. The amount that we're getting uh, has been announced in our revenue sharing, our, our tax base. Rev the revenue that is based on the state sales tax, we get paid some of that, and that fluctuates. You have to know how much money people are going to spend, so obviously it's hard to guess that ahead of time. They do have that figure out. They just announced a, like a bonus for safety, fire, and police. Now, we don't know how much that is, but that will be an addition. So I think if I, I think we projected a little bit higher than what the actual amount that we're going to get for revenue sharing is. However, we still have that other shooter to drop that we may have some adjustments in the future to make. And that's what you do with the budget. You project 
the best with the best information you have. When that information things play out, then we do adjustments too. So do that. So it's it's quite common to do that, and that's just something a heads up that's coming up uh, in the next few weeks. We'll know what the second amount is for our revenue sharing for safety, and that's those would be funds restricted for safety, and we have no idea how it's going to come out if it's grant type, if it's just evenly distributed or what. We'll, we'll find out. Uh, water tower yeah. park refrigerator. These in figures it. aren't in addition to. These are just, you don't know what the numbers were before, Charlie? On, on which one? The, which budget amount? All of them. Are they pretty much all of them. That I mean, much added? That or? much added, or this is a new number? I mean, it's not added to. Oh, no, no. It's, it's a new it's number. Just, it's just, just a new, just it's it's the just number. A new number. Yes. It's not adding this to it. It's yes. just no, a new number. No, it's just. Okay. We don't have that money. I, we don't. <laughs> no, no. Correct. No. <laughs> Correct. For the most part, I just round it up to the next hundred or so. To the next hundred or the next thousand. For the most thousand. part, but a, a couple of them a little bit more, but for the most part. All right. Yeah, and I do know on the streetlights, for the last few years okay. that as they replace the old streetlights with more efficient LEDs, that our bill steadily dropped. Well, now they pretty much caught up. Yeah. And I think electric price is going up a little bit it, it's we won't enjoy that luxury going forward for there's still more to do though there's still more to do but most of them have been replaced already there's not many of the old ones yellow looking sodium lights we have uh, one do you have mm -hmm. one well uh, i hope it burns out soon <laughs> So, yeah, anytime you see one of those and it's flashing on and off, call it in right away and they'll replace it and that'll save us some money. But we, I think we've realized all the big savings from that. Any other questions? The water tower park refrigerator is failing. That uh, seems to be. This one right here? Yeah. Seems to be, it's the one that we use for the rental. There's another one in there that we don't own uh, and it's chain shot. We never use it. And, but the one that we use for the rentals is failing. It seems to be cold as long as you don't put anything in it, <laughs> but it's not keeping up. I've looked at prices. You can get a, like a 20.5 cubic foot, which would be a real nice refrigerator for that, between $800 and $1,000. And that's without an ice maker, which is exactly what we want. People bring their own ice anyway and more freezer space. It'll be good. It'll be spacious. If you move up to a commercial unit, it's four thousand five hundred dollars. So it jumps significantly. It's a lot bigger unit. So we don't have to have commercial in there. We we don't have to. Uh, for what we do, we don't have to have commercial. We're it's not licensed as a commercial kitchen. Commercial kitchen. kitchen. Okay. So yeah, nobody's cooking food and selling it there. Okay. Just out of curiosity, yeah. when I came in and talked to you about that, that was one of the things that we discussed is that's always a possibility to have that yeah. license as a commercial kitchen. Is there something that's going to be too um, costly to make that happen or uh, other than the fridge? The fridge that's it's, there is probably commercial, isn't it? If we ever can unlock it. <laughs> it's, yeah, well, it doesn't we don't belong to us. Yeah, we don't own it. It doesn't. It belongs. Maybe they sell it. It, it could be. I don't know. Uh, there, it, I think that was probably not because they get government money and they can't dispose of things and give it away. So that's probably not likely. And they do keep a close tabs. They ask us if anything's out of place or anything missing. So they do have that inventory that and they watch closely. The kitchen actually it, what is certified. It was certified as a commercial yes. kitchen. And what we talked about is there's a possibility that we could have it signed off at the health department. And get it certified as a commercial kitchen again and then rent it out for just specifically for that use because anybody doing cottage foods and things like that they can expand how much they sell and they can go into ohio and sell things for their farmers markets and things so there's a possibility and i'm still willing to look at that I, i'd like to do a little more homework before i spend five thousand or so on a commercial refrigerator because this one might i mean a smaller one might be okay. That's what but, I was but just. I just don't know. I was just going to ask: Do we have to have a commercial fridge in order to have it licensed as a commercial? And fridge? that I do not know. Okay. I, I don't know, but I, I do know that we we have to have something pretty right. quick here. Would you have to lock the um, kitchen? 
the kitchen when you rent the hall, though, if you have the commercial I, kitchen? I don't think so, because you're not using it. You can still use it in the kitchen as a rental space, but... But you'd have to have it cleaned to pass uh, the inspections. You'd have to clean it yourself right? coming in first anyways. Right. Yeah, I, I think it's, you know, the, the facility gets certified. The cleanliness standards are up to the user, I, I would think. No, I'm guessing no. the well, cleanliness goes well, by. Oh, yeah, it definitely, <laughs> the yeah. Building. Oh, yeah, it would definitely have to be, it would have to meet that standard all the time. Yes. Right. So, right. I mean, it would That's be part of our sign-off inspection. Maybe have to lock it if they're not renting the kitchen. Yeah, so usually people use it, though. Yeah, yeah but most people would use it. Because the yeah, yeah. 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 they are using the refrigerator. So that's just the dilemma. Do we, I, I'm comfortable with getting one now because we have to have something. We can't have small food. Yeah, that's the thing. Right. We need it. Right. Now. We need one now. And I've had some suggestions to look around, and I'll, I'll pursue those options. And I think a thousand would be a worse. It can't take too piece. long, no. Exactly. No, because <laughs> may be able to find a, a dented one, a nice one dented one at like. Yeah. Lowe's that has a dent in it that somebody didn't want it because it had a dent in the side right. or something We like have that. a uh, brand new resident in town who has 40 years experience of appliance repair. Yes. And he would show yeah. up tomorrow to take a look at it and give a diagnose. You can do that. If you, yeah, somebody. He's my uncle. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know a guy. I'll I'll get get you know a guy. Okay. You know a guy? He showed up at my house and fixed my dishwasher in five minutes. All right. You know, it might be well, worth it to have him come and look at yeah. it. He'll come out tomorrow morning. You know, yeah. we can leave that on the uh, agenda and then not do it if we don't need it. I mean, if, Why don't if we, we get a professional to look at it? Yeah. And then well, you can make it around. What I worry about is going another two weeks before we buy one. If it thinks junk, we have to buy a new one. Well, but, I mean, you can buy a refrigerator and have it delivered in two days at the most yeah but no but we got to prove it i'm saying he could he could diagnose it do you want to do you, i mean we, when we, we do could our motion, approve one up yeah. to yes. a point yes if the but don't do it if the repair if is not, not possible yeah. that's what i'm getting at don't do it if we don't have to right, right. Um, but we can add that in the but if he motion. can come and look at it right away and he yes. would Absolutely. tell us yeah, yeah. I just, that, tell us I to did, fix it or yeah. one. i would definitely fix it and go the tight wad and we would do that in a heartbeat but then I don't want to be stuck if he says it's junk. If we didn't approve the money to go buy one, if we okay. need it. Right. We can add that. We so, can add it. So, but I definitely won't spend it if we don't have to. If we can fix this one or find one of much less price, lower price. That's all I have for new business. Uh, community input, open the floor for community input. Stacy Grimes. <laughs> Uh, Stacy Grimes, 11256 Herald Drive. Um, I'm looking at the stormwater pump repairs, and it says stormwater pumps. What? How many pumps are you looking at? There's two pumps in two different stations. One's Memorial Station, and that's the only one that has that we that I know of that has one of the original pumps that we never replaced. The other one, it was replaced in like 20. Uh, like 2012 or something like that. It was one of the newer pumps. I was going to say, we replaced but quite a few of the pumps. It, yes, and that is one of them that we replaced early on, and but it quit. And it, it uh, the impeller was damaged, if you look at that. It, it looked like it got sanded So that can't something. be repaired. It, it, that's the one they're repairing. They that's are the repairing one that went $40,000 to The one for 40000 They're They're totally rebuilding the inside of it. And the impeller is actually worn out on that one. Um, well, 165,000 seems awfully uh, high. We're looking it's at 105. A, yeah, it, it's actually 105. Not on there. Not on there. That's, a, that's not the right number. Yeah, that's not the right okay. number. We we discussed right. that. That's, um, that's, <laughs> that includes three pumps, and we only need two. Okay. We just did the math. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, how much will be left in the FEEP account? Uh, there's still I think about a hundred thousand, right? That's more than that. Um, a significant amount. Um, County's looking. Yeah. How much? County's looking right now. She's right behind you. She's looking. Two, three hundred thousand, or 
Are the, are the pump stations that we're, you're talking about, is there an active pump in those stations at this particular time? Yes, there is. So there's but only one pump in each station that's working? There's, well, it, that's, that's true for one of them. Um, the one pump is one of the only, I think it is the only one that has three. And that's First Street. Have, have has three all the pumps there. been tested? Uh, because I know the yeah. way that float system works in there that one pump yeah. kicks on. And if the other pump doesn't get activated, it yeah. just stays Yeah, Kennedy dormant. came out and they, they, trouble, they did the troubleshooting. They, and they actually pulled the pump. They, they pulled the pump and disassembled it and they found what was wrong with that pump. The other one was totally seized up. Not doing anything. Well, um, you're saying there's only going to be approximately hundred thousand dollars left in the fee. No, 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 no. no. Like no. 200, over two hundred thousand. Over two hundred. Uh, yeah, over two hundred thousand left over. I'm showing three thirty-two before the one hundred five. Okay. So if we take one hundred five out of the three thirty-two, it's still two twenty-five or something like that. Okay. Has any walkthrough on the wall uh, as far as damage to the wall? Has there been any estimates? on any repairs that need to be taken place or I, I know the last time I did it was probably four years ago maybe five years ago uh, we've actually done repairs since then and we're now we're doing our inspection it's not taking the beating it was when the water was really high but we expect to find a few places that need to be repaired but, I know of at least one so far but we didn't finish our inspection yet so we'll put it together Okay, because I know I know that can be expensive too when yes. we start to repair that. So, yeah. but if you're going to still have over two hundred thousand, how much uh, comes in on taxes as far as that goes into the FEPA account? What's what's the checking? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Connie is a godsend. Okay, there's roughly. Um, Next year, we're actually expecting closer to 68000 in total. I mean, between um, property tax and personal tax, it's like 55000 And then we're earning quite a bit in interest right now. Okay, so we'll be back up over a quarter of a million. Yeah, so it, it goes up at least fifty to 55 right. this year. Okay, we'll make the pumps and back in two years. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, as, as, are you, Mark, are you planning on doing a walkthrough on the wall as far as? I'm uh, trying to get some coordination. Yeah, we have our, yeah. different people have their uh, station. They have their sections. Okay. And, and I know. Uh, can you have that report at the next meeting as far as, is that, or is that? I, uh, we, I don't know if it's going to be done by the next meeting. Yeah, because we're, we're, well, we, Every, there's a few people that are out of town for the next meeting, and we won't have a quorum. So we actually canceled the August okay. meeting. We, we canceled that okay. this month's meeting because there wasn't enough people. Right. And we're canceling next month's meeting because there's not going to be enough people. All right, because this, you're coming in at the best time to go out and inspect yeah. the wall. When we're still the doing the inspections. We just won't be. We, probably, we won't have a fat meeting um, because vacations and things. No, but it'll, will it be? But we're still ongoing. Will it we're be still done before? The end of October. October. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be we'll be done. Okay. It, it, it's it's looking a lot better. It's not getting the. Well, I, I, I talked to a couple of people down in Allen's Cove, <coughs> where the yeah. wall was listing towards towards yeah. the lake, yeah. and um, I know we did measurements on that as far as the angle that it has changed, and I don't know if anybody's done any of that, but we we can't have a blowout. Right. down there exactly so yep and that's the one person i heard back from is that his section and okay he's not done yet but he did report one spot okay so the it's a hundred and five thousand right yep. and change yes. and, and change there's less, there less, than, less than 106 100, 106 <laughs> 105 six, six, there, seven, I think we got there it. may be some rail work there uh the first contractor came out and said it'll work the way it is uh the second contractor is looking at it, and Dave's, and you know, this is all ongoing stuff. So, uh, well, it's not going to be like the other one where it's like, oh, is this much more? I mean, we're presenting not to exceed this amount, yeah, right? So. Right, and so far, it's it, what it's it's looking like a lot less than what they anticipated. The, the contractor that came and priced it said that that pump will work. That the pump will work the way that rail is right now. 
So Dave's getting a second opinion on that from the second supplier that he had come out and see if they can. Should we get table the it then? I'm not sure because that we're losing too much time, and that part is going to be the cheap part. And it's the 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 argument's not whether it's going to be too expensive. The argument's whether it, it's even needed at all. So it's going to be very minor. And we've put rails in. I think Stacy will. Yeah. We, we put the rails in, that's not the major part of the job. The pumps are definitely the major part of the job. And the rails, I'm thinking. I, mean, well, I, I, don't I think, think when I was on the committee, I, I think the pumps were about $35,000, $40,000 at the most. So they're yeah. going up substantially. So I yeah. think it's an 18 week lead time, too, for a rebuild. Yes. I don't, oh, yeah. I, I'm, so don't I'm, wanna... I'm nervous about waiting um, because they, right now, the the pump stations are all tied together and it's keeping up but if we get a severe event they might not keep up well they'd be especially being down two pumps yeah. come in the fall when the weather gets bad yes we need to be prepared for it. yeah i i i'm not i'm not comfortable waiting um and putting the city at risk i'm, I'm concerned about the risk but, not, I mean, but you're changing your story about the price here. You're like saying now there's going to be well, no. This if we still give a no, I'm sorry. If we still get a not to exceed, it could be cheaper. Yeah, that's what he's saying. I'm saying yeah. Okay. I'm saying so it's it's, it's it's trending down. It's looking like it's going to be less. Okay. Right. Five thousand or so, I would think. More well, I, I know the stations are set up to where you can have three pumps in there. Are there are yeah. there two pumps in each station today? Yes. That, and, and and there's only. What two stations where only one pump is working? Uh, there's one one station with one pump working, and there's one with two pumps, but that feeds a lot. That that needs three. It has a lot more water feeding into it. So, so that one's are, down. The, the three pump station that's the only one we have is down to two. Okay. And the other one's down to one. Okay, so. And there may you be some, you will have at least two pumps, active pumps that are capable of working. Uh, Once you get in each after, station after it's fixed. After it's fixed. Yeah. yeah. After it's fixed. Yep. After it's fixed. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Shelby. Shelby from four four two three Oak Street. Um, I'm just here to a black party. Close the street. September twenty eighth. I think we've done it before with a problem. Um, yeah, that's always been in July, but we're backing it up to maybe cool. So, and I do have signatures from all the residents, if you are. Uh, when was that again? September. Uh, September 28th. Do we want to add that to the agenda tonight? Do you want to well, I submit it? Well, I don't know if you asked, you made me do She's wait a month. Yeah. She's Go ahead. Really. Okay, do you want now to submit it? Well, yeah. 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 You can you can submit it, right? Yeah. We'll, and then yeah. I think we'll still have time to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then we'll mm -hmm. I won't adjust the agenda this time, but we'll go. Sounds good. Basically, Thank you. Just giving him permission to close our street as long as all the neighbors agree. Anybody else? Connie. They've never had a problem. They've been had. Connie Cole, 10644 Lakeside Drive. Um, there's been some questions that came up on Facebook this week about the trees growing along the pier and in the rocks. And I have the same concern on the earthen dike within the pier. Um, and to me, it's not really clear, you know, is that flood and erosion committee as part of the overall dike system? Is it the city's issue? Who's, whose responsibility is it? I mean, it seems like it's kind of one of those borderline areas. You've got a beach area there that has a lot of brush and trees growing in it that I think probably should be cleaned up as well. It would look a lot nicer if that was area was cleared up. But I'm struggling with how to kill the trees that are coming up in the rocks in that area. And, you know, it would, if there was some direction, and I don't need an answer tonight, it's just a matter of, is that flood and erosion control? Who really monitors that? Is there, is um, there? I, I do have an answer for that. It really, it, it, the DPW is taking charge of that, and Dave is working on a plan. He had somebody that volunteered to bring his workers in, who owns a company, bring his workers in and do that, and they were trying to make the arrangements for the time. 
and Dave is in contact with him. He thought he would be done already, but Dave's working with him to get that done and our, our city workers, it's on their radar too. Because that is, you can't let them get big. That right. will cause a compromise in the dike system. If you have a big tree, when it falls over during a storm, it could leave a gaping hole in the dike system. So that is actually part of the inspection process. They've cut them down here on the earthen dike over here. Uh, this is the first time they really started coming up there, but we talked about it even yesterday that about getting those cut out of there and getting them removed. And so is uh, that just along the pier or would that include the city lot area where there's the rocks? Uh, pretty much all of that along there. Okay. Because we do have authority to go in and, and maintain the dike. So even if it's on uh, somebody's yard that faces the dike, it's just like any part of the dike. The city, according to our ordinance, has the right to go in and maintain the dike system. So we, we'll take charge of that okay. and do that. Do you, um, oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to ask, do the sheriff's department, do the trustees? We, Dave and I are talking about that, too. Um, and there's, there's a few labor. details. There's a few. Uh, there's some good sides and there's some downsides based on Dave's experience. Um, and I, I did call the guy and I didn't get a call back. So we're, 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 we're discussing that possibility too, but we have this one really is the hottest prop, you know, thing we got going. If that doesn't pan out, then we'll, we'll make an alternate plan, but we're definitely gonna cut those trees. Are we also talking about inside the, the pier as well, that whole area there where the- I, um, the um, Yes. Kayak launch used uh, to the, be. The pads, the, the, the aquatic plants, those are lotuses. They're protected. That's a problem. Can't touch them. It, it is a protected species. Legally. Even though, even though they, they grow, they're real prolific here. When you look at the map of where they grow, it's very isolated areas. So they are a threatened species. But this and year it seems to protected. be there's a larger area that has more the, of a seaweed milfoil in it than has... The lotuses actually seem to be down this year compared to last yeah. year. So and there is an area that I think... Anything below the ordinary high watermark, Eagle wants a permit. And they even have a permit that's... Even if you're cutting um, Phragmite, which is an invasive that really a problem, and they cut it, they want to know about it. So they issue a permit for free, but they just want to know about it. So every, anything you do below the ordinary high water mark has to be cleared through Eagle. Uh, we can do everything above that and, and our trees that are there, the inside we'll have to do a little homework on and see what, what we're allowed to cut. I, I, I don't think that's a problem. It's just a matter of contacting them and telling them this is what we want to do and get their approval. Okay, slightly different subject. Yep. I hope whosoever boat has been parked within the pier for the last week is spending a lot of money in the city because they've gotten free dockage for about a week uh, now. Yes, and, and that's not on the police report, but he did, he, he did uh, take Thank care Thank you. Of that. Oh, please, go no, ahead. Mine's quick. Just to piggyback on, uh, Marilyn Foster, 4360 South 5th Street. <laughs> um, just to piggyback on what you guys were just talking about, um, it's more minor, but all those trees along the beach have not only grown back, and I've been trying to pull them out, but I, I'm not strong enough to get... The roots are in there, but now they're collecting a tremendous amount of trash. So I'm trying to reach over and grab it, but it's it's getting very nasty. Um, so that they need to, and you can't. The guy who cleans the beach does a wonderful job, but he can't get there. Yep. So that needs to be addressed again. Too. Okay. Thank I you. will up the priority on that and make sure we get yep. one group or another in there. Yep. Uh, Dewey Huang, 4334 South Seventh Street. Um, I would like to uh, make a statement contrasting what the chief had said. Dynamic does seem to be spinning up a little bit again. <laughs> um, so we've seen a lot of activity over there uh, more recently within the last few weeks. Um, the other piece, just echoing what Jim was saying with the security stuff with the lighthouse, um, there was enterprise networking equipment. There's going to be a new server over there, and that's via donation. That also being said, 
Um, can we get like a sturdier shelf over? Like, there's like it's like plastic oh, with like stress yeah. fracturing. <laughs> so like, if we're gonna put some expensive equipment there, happy to help. But um, I'm a little worried about how much weight that shelf could take. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, right. that's we're getting some really really good equipment. And that's yeah we can we can make I, that I happen. I just hate to see that. That was made yeah. for a basic basically to hold a DVR and a tiny monitor. Yeah. This is much more substantial. Yes, we can do that. That'd be awesome. Thank you. Dave Davidson. 4404 Center for Street, Luna Pier. Just two items. Number one, the new police millage. And they're calling it a new police millage because they're going from 1.9 to 2.0. Okay, and if I heard right, those funds could only be used for hours? They, they pay the wages, yeah. Okay, they can't be used for equipment or anything? What the... We, no, we take that out of the regular police budget and we budget the hours out of the, the millage. millage. Okay. You think it's wise to go ask for a new one rather than just the renewal, the 1.9? It's the wording it's, that has to be worded that way. It's confusing and we, it's, we have to, it's our responsibility to communicate to the community that it's really a renewal that might have an adjustment for uh, uh, inflation in that, but okay. it, it's just the way they yes. worded on the ballot, and it, we can't change the way they worded on the ballot. Yeah, correct. I, I yep, I question that, and a lot of it has to do with the Headley Amendment because um, it's limited until it ends, and then and it's new. It's, and now it's so new. the way they say it, and even though you're renewing the, it. it, even though it's like the. The, the FEP, it's exactly the same bill and everything, but they don't see it as a renewal. They said that's who's, who's they? The is that the legal, county? Yes, legal, the legal system, our lawyers, the county, everybody agrees. That's how you got to put it. How the county did. Yeah. Okay. They, we submit it one way, and that's what they tell us it has to be done. Okay. And what does that, uh, how much does that generate? I have to look that up, and it's based on the value. Yeah, I know it's. County's gone. Yeah, I know it's. <laughs> what would we do without you? Yeah. A dollar for every well, thousand. It's probably roughly twice what it was for that flood erosion control for those two mills. It's about 90000 Okay. That's more than that. It's about 100 And what are we paying the officers an hour now? It, it's just do it, seventeen. Yeah, there's different. There's different Change. rates. Yeah, there's different yeah, rates for different. The, okay, I, I understand that too. I think we're at least at seventeen and change, and up and it goes up from yeah. there. Yeah, we had to. We're we did give a raise 17. because I thought we yeah. raised it to we're seventeen. No, we're and no, we went above that. We went up from there. Twenty-one. Because our our officers were okay. leaving. She said twenty-three to twenty-five. Yeah, yeah they just got go. that raise yeah. because they were. Yeah, I was here when you did it. Yeah, they were leaving for other departments, so we. Okay, and as far as the Safety City program goes, um, I guess before next year, you do it, ask for donations somehow, some way, to feed the kids and give them drinks and stuff like that. I mean, I know a lot of people that would donate to the Safety City program, a lot. Yeah. My, my kids are in their 40s, and they went through the program. <laughs> yeah. so. I'm not yeah. that old. Yeah. So, yeah. The firemen there was took no it safety when you well, know. If, if there would be something out there, they yeah. asked for yeah. donations yeah. for yeah. the safety the city. Fire the fire department. This year they took it on themselves, so I think next year we'll bring it to Derek too. Because you're right, a lot of people will be willing to donate snacks and stuff like right. that. I mean, there's... Like they used to. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? We have an open floor. I think we think caught we everybody. everybody. With that, I'll close the community input. And if anybody has anything, they can always stop into City Hall. If you're watching online, uh, stop into City Hall anytime, and we'd like to hear from you. Council action, 7th Street Park tree planting. Do I have a motion? 
I propose a motion to approve the Parks and Recreation Committee's request to plant trees at 7th Street Park this fall of 2024 as presented. Second. We have a motion. We have support. Any discussion? We'll do a roll call vote. Council members Wakeman. Yes. Gramsa. Yes. Perry. Yes. Needing. Yes. Skutulski. Yes. Natalie. Yes. Mayor Gardner. Yes. Thank you very much. Motion carried. Stormwater pump repair. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the repair of one stormwater pump and replace another as quoted at $105,667, including the rail system not to exceed, sorry, quoted at, yeah, it would be quoted at, but still quoted. Uh, not to exceed the same amount of one hundred and five thousand six hundred and sixty seven dollars. Sorry, Charlie. <laughs> okay. yeah, right. Support. Uh, we have a motion, we have support. Um, is that going to include the rail system? Yeah, see there may be it does, but there may be a reduction. Maybe a reduction. Yeah. But, okay. Right. So it's not gonna exceed. Yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah, hopefully. If not we'll We'll know in time because they'll okay. order stuff, I think. I support. So we have a motion. We have support. Any discussion? <coughs> we'll roll call vote. Needing. Yes. Skatulski. Yes. Gramza. Yes. Donnelly. Yes. Wakeman. Yes. Perry. Yes. Gardner. Yes. Thank you very much. Motion carried. 2023-2024 budget amendments. Do I have a motion? I propose the motion to approve the 2023-2024 budget amendments as presented. Support. We have a motion, we have support. Any discussion? Do a roll call vote. Skatulski. Yes. Donnelly. Yes. Wakeman. Yes. Ramza. Yes. Harry. Yes. Needing. Yes. Gardner. Yes. Thank you very much. Motion carried. And D, Water Tower Park Refrigerator. I'll make a motion to approve either the repair or purchase of a refrigerator for Water Tower Park at a cost of mo no more than $1,000 as presented. Support. We have a motion. We have support. Any discussion? We'll do a roll call vote. Donnelly. Yes. Wigman. Yes. Ramza. Yes. Perry. Yes. Eating. Yes. Skutulski. Yes. Gardner. Yes. Thank you very much. Motion carried. That <coughs> concludes our council action for tonight. Council input and information. I think we'll start on this side. Um, Councilor Dean. I really don't have anything. Um, I, I just want to say we did, we did have the party here, um, the graduation party, and the rental worked out <coughs> phenomenal. And I think that, you know, going forward with the master plan, if we can work something out to add a pavilion like we talked about, I I think this rental is a uh, diamond in the rough here if we approach it right. Um, so great. good feedback. It, it turned out great. Oh, great. Um, the only thing I wanted to say, and for anybody listening, we need some tree donations for 7th Street Park. We're going to be a few trees short from the plan that we just uh, voted in. So if anybody would like to follow suit on Grove Street and donate some trees to the city, they would appreciate it. Do you have a type? Yeah. Um, yes. Red maples. And what do they run <coughs> for the maturity that they want? Couldn't tell you. Oh, all right. <laughs> I would estimate 30 40 50 dollars. Is of, there a certain yeah. maturity level that they're looking for? Because if you bring a sapling, they're probably going to get mowed over. Right. The yeah. ones that we uh, did just a a month ago they were about six to eight feet tall okay yep I would communicate well before you buy a tree just to make sure because there's so yes. many varieties you're so close that yeah, very good counselor I'm good Wait, um, there is a Facebook going around that the library is looking for donations for kids backpacks tennis shoes hair cuts so if you want to stop at the library and donate to that I guess then it gets a grant uh, okay 
we are very, we live in a very generous community, so. Council of Grants. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at Deep school supplies. So I, I know where there's gotcha. a box that they're donating, so I think I will suggest it go down the street. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Councilor Skatulski. I'm good, thank you. All set. Okay. Thank you. The only thing I'd say is uh, add is congratulations to Dave West and Luna Pier Storage. 25 years in Luna Pier, and he has been a great neighbor. It's not often people come to you and say, why didn't you ask me for money for this? <laughs> and Dave's that kind. very generous, and he's been a fantastic neighbor. Did yeah, we get a uh, sketch from him? Ask. Did we get a sketch from him on what he wanted to propose for the drainage? Yes, I have some stuff. I want to talk to you about that. All right. And uh, I'll go over it with you. Yep. Okay. We can do that. Uh, moving on. No correspondence. Uh, general information, the early voting begins Saturday, July 27th through Sunday, August 4th. Polls are located at Erie Township Hall, 2065 Erie Road, 7.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. And that is posted at City Hall if you need that information. Election Day, August 6th. The polls are located at Luna Pier Fire Station. Voting is from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. I lost my last sheet here. Uh, future meeting dates. The Parks and Recreation, Tuesday, August 13th, 2024, 7 p.m. at the library. The FEP meeting has been canceled Tuesday, August 20th. The DDA is Tuesday, August 27th, 7 p.m. right here at Water Tower Park. The same day planning is Tuesday, August 26th, 2024, 4 p.m. Water Tower Park. City Council is Thursday, August 8th, 2024, 7 p.m. Water Tower Park. Summer Smash. August 17th, 2024, 12 to 3 p.m. And I'm sure they could use some volunteer help for that. The night market, we're excited about that. September 7th, 2024, 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, feather Party, November 23rd, 2024, 5 p.m. to 5 to 11 p.m. Kudos to them for getting that out early on the annual Christmas tree lighting. A visit from Santa, December 7th, 2024, Pearl Harbor Day, 5 30 to 8.30 p.m. With that, do I have a motion to adjourn? Can I ask a question first? What? Weren't we going to vote on the Black Party for uh, Oak Street? Uh, I, was gonna, I didn't know if you wanted no, this we meeting or the okay. next meeting. I don't think. Next meeting. Yeah, okay. Next meeting. Why don't we give it to Charlie so he can, uh, we can do that. Okay. Okay. put it on the agenda? Yeah, okay. okay. Good question. Now do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Um, what? No. Neil and I will not be at the August 8th council meeting. Sorry. It's my birthday. Okay. Oh, happy birthday, Dom. Are you going somewhere, Doug? <laughs> yes. I won't be, I won't <laughs> okay. be until last August here. one. Because <laughs> we're okay. going. Whatever <laughs> that one is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Duly noted. Still waiting on a motion to adjourn. Motion, oh, motion to adjourn. adjourn. Support. 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 <laughs> we have support. Take your break. <laughs> support. Charlie Dragon Hi. 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 Opposed. Motion. Move. Um, yeah, no. Do you need any, anything before the...